Sephora haul time. What's up friends? Welcome back to my channel. I hope you all are doing well. You know what this video is. This is going to be my Sephora haul. This is everything that I bought in this year's holiday savings event. And in this video, I also am going to do kind of like a mini first impressions of the new Mario eyeshadow palette. I did pick this up in my local Sephora last night and I use it today for the first time. And I definitely, definitely have some thoughts. So I want to get out my first impressions before this sale ends. So I'm going to do that also at the end. And before I get into this haul, if this is your first time here, or if you are new to my channel, then welcome, welcome. My name is Sophia, and this is my channel where we talk about all things beauty and luxury. Every single week, I upload new content on new beauty releases, fashion and luxury lifestyle. So if that sounds of interest to you, then you're in the right place, my friend. Hit that subscribe button to join our fam. You can also click the notification bell to hear about every time I upload a new video. Take a quick second, give this video a thumbs up if you like it. And as you guys know, I will be linking everything that I mentioned in this video in the description box down below. There is still time to shop this sale. We got a couple more days left. And so I'm trying to get this out before the sale ends. And all right, party people, let's get into this haul. A lot of you were asking me, what are you gonna get in the sale? Are you gonna do a video about what you might get in the sale? And the answer to that, friends, is like, a lot of times I don't really even get that much. It's a lot of replenishment products. Sometimes there are a couple of things that I've been thinking about that I didn't choose to review. The thing is I buy things as they launch so I can get the reviews out for everybody. So by the time the sale hits, I already have the new Natasha palette. I already have like that new foundation. I already have the Gucci blushes. Like I already have all this stuff. I review them for you guys so that you have those reviews for when you go to shop the sale. So the things that I typically buy in the sale are big expensive items that I've been wanting, usually fragrance, maybe something that I didn't review that I've kind of been thinking about or the reviews ended up being good and now I just kind of want it for myself. And then replenishment items. I do not do backups. I have a rule for myself. I don't do backups. I have to literally finish up the product or be almost done before I buy another item because half the time I buy backups and then I don't end up using them or they expire and I end up wasting my money. So with that, I'm gonna go through all this stuff in no particular order. It's still gonna be a really fun haul, don't you worry. I'm gonna start off with the biggest item that I purchased. This was the one thing I was considering during the sale. And I actually asked you guys on my Instagram if you think I should get it. And I ended up getting it. I ended up getting the Dyson Airwrap. This is the new one that comes in like the purple and purple and rose gold. I will show you guys what the color looks like. I just opened this this morning and I did do my hair with this attachment. I don't know what the attachments are. Had absolutely no time to watch any tutorials, nothing. All I know is that my hair looked like a hot mess when I took it out of my little bun after going on my Peloton. I showered and I used this and I got this super duper smooth, kind of like straight blowout. This is what the new color looks like. I think it's stunning. I think it's really beautiful. It's a purpley blue. And then I'll show you here, it's kind of easier to tell this is what the metal looks like. So it's kind of like a rose gold. Really, really beautiful. A lot of you guys on my Instagram said, yes, you need to get this. It's such a game changer. I know that my mom has this and she also has the hair dryer, and she really likes them. So I figured I would give it a try. I'm going to keep all the boxes and the receipts and everything because if this doesn't work out and I hate it, I am going to return it. So I think I'm going to try it out over the course of the next week see how it gets along with my hair. Some of you said, I don't really feel like it makes my hair hold the curl, but my hair, it holds a curl pretty well. I would say my biggest frustration with my hair is because my hair is so thin, I don't get a lot of volume. Like it actually isn't that hard for me to get this hairstyle and for it to stay, but I just like have a really hard time getting volume. In order for me to get volume, I have to either use a lot of texturizing spray or I have to put my hair in curlers. It's all about how my hair sets and so I'm hoping with the power of Dyson the way that this tool works it'll kind of cool my hair into place I don't know we'll see if any of you have this and you have any tips or tricks or hacks other than the obvious stuff that I might see in the tutorial from Dyson comment down below and let me know because I'm looking for some tips on how I can get more volume with this 
or maybe how I can make use of the attachments. That is the first item that I bought. This was the biggest thing that I got. And yeah, that is my Dyson Airwrap. Full disclosure, I also forgot to say in the beginning, some of these items are actually from the friends and family sale that happened earlier in October. If you're not familiar with that sale, it's basically like the same thing. It is 20% off, but you need to have a special code from like a Sephora employee or something like that. And one of you guys, my makeup fairy godmother messaged me on Instagram and you gave me a code that I could use in the friends and family sale. So I picked up a couple of things in that sale, a couple of things in this sale, and just kind of combine them all together. So if I have tried anything here, any new makeup, I'll let you guys know what I think of it so far because there are a couple of things here that I have tried. Anyway, in the friends and family sale, I got this. I told you I was gonna get this when I talked about my Sephora gift sets. Ah, this is the La Mer gift set. I got this one last year, loved it. I love La Mer. I know a lot of people say, it's super overpriced and it's not worth it. But last year I was really struggling with my skin and I found that this really, really helped. I don't know, I've tried so many different things and I really do notice the hydration level when it comes to La Mer. I've told you guys in previous videos, I don't really recommend La Mer unless you have ridiculously insatiable dry skin. Like nothing will completely hydrate your skin. If you like really, really thick creams, and you really need to kind of cocoon your skin in the winter in a dry climate, that's when I recommend this. Otherwise, it's just like really too expensive to be honest with you. And last year, this set, it got me through the whole winter plus pretty much it got me through the whole year, but I mostly just use it in the winter. But let me show this to you guys. Look at the satin box. It's so beautiful. They have another version of this gift that comes in the moisturizing soft cream and the box is a little bit different. I have this box in the one that I got last year in my bathroom sitting on a little side table and that's where I put extra little samples and hair ties and band-aids and cotton swabs and all that extra stuff that just kind of clutters around your bathroom if you need a place to put like your tweezers or your nail files. This is great for that so you can reuse this. So let me Okay, so this is what you get. You get a full size La Mer and then you get this travel size. And man, you just feel so luxurious using your little travel size when you're on vacation or on a work trip and you just want, you know, you wanna like have that little bit of luxury, feel like you still have your daily routine. So this is an excellent gift. And look, the box is just so insanely nice. This part right here, it pops out obviously. So you can take these out, you can recycle them and then you can reuse the box. So I restocked on my La Mer. I'm not going in any particular order, by the way, but we are going to talk about fragrance next. So the next item that I picked up, it is a Tom Ford fragrance. You guys know I love Tom Ford. I'm always keeping a lookout on what new fragrances are popping up from his brand. I know they can be a little bit strong, but I do have a couple that I really like. And at this point, I'm pretty much a Tom Ford fragrance collector. So the one that I bought is, I think this is his newest release. And this is called Bois Moroccan. Look at that beautiful bottle. And this is a super woody scent. I kind of go at least this time of year for like deep, warm florals, woody, spicy. I was really curious how this would compare to Oud Wood because that is a favorite of mine from Tom Ford. And I also really enjoy ombre leather this time of year. I will say, you know, if you like Oud Wood, I think you will probably enjoy this as well. They are different enough. I will say Oud Wood is very much characterized by that Oud scent. It's kind of got that incense sort of smell. Whereas I think this, while it is just as wood, it's almost like instead of paired with that incense, it's paired with more of a floral character. So I think that this one is just a little bit softer, but you do need to like woody scents. This is very much a unisex scent. You and your partner can wear it, whether you are male or female, you definitely can wear this. I also was curious how this would compare to the one that released last year, which is called Iben Fume. I also have that one. That one is much smokier. If you like Iben Fume and you like Oud Wood, this definitely falls in a very similar category. So I would suggest checking this out, pop into your Sephora, spray it on, see how it reacts with your skin. I'm wearing it today and I don't feel like it's too overpowering, 
but like I can still smell it. I can still tell that it's there. It's a really, really great fall and winter scent. And I'm glad I picked this up in the friends and family sale because I was able to kind of try it out a little bit before talking about it here to you guys. The other fragrance that I ended up picking up is not new at all. In fact, this is like my OG signature scent. I wore this every single day in college, every single day in kind of like my early 20s, but it is a very strong and sexy scent. And so I just remember my first job out of college, I, I started thinking like, is this too strong for the workplace? And somewhere along the line, I only wore it as like a going out fragrance. And then I kind of stopped wearing it. And then recently I rediscovered it, but my bottle was like all old and gross and pretty much depleted. And the fragrance that I got is this one. It's Alien. Does anybody else wear Alien? I love this fragrance. I know it's a lot. I know it's very strong, but I love this. And every time I wear this, people are like, man, you smell so good. What is that sexy scent? It's the kind of scent that really sticks with you. Like if you leave the room, people kind of like smell that, that like sexy trail. I'm opening the box. I'm like, I'm, I'm getting the scent and it smells so good. They didn't have the smaller bottle in stock. They only had the bigger bottle but you know what i'm happy with this i think it's a really really beautiful bottle it looks like very legal in the display so i'm really excited to kind of rediscover my love of this and i definitely wanted to get the 20 percent off it's fragrance like i don't need this it's more of like an enjoyment and so i also picked this one up do you see this cat back here this is not your haul this is not your haul i do not have treats up here there's no treats <laughs> She's so cute. What else? What else? I also have two hair products. The first one is a replenishment product. We're going to get to makeup. Don't worry. But I got to show you this other stuff. This is the Verb Hair Mask. This is the hydrating mask. That's what it's called. This is such a good conditioner. I know that it's called a mask, but I just use this as like my everyday conditioner. I wash my hair probably about twice a week twice a week ish so by the time I get to my wash a lot of times my hair is like pretty tangled because I've probably been wearing it in buns or I've been putting hairspray in it you know thickening spray texturizing sprays all that kind of stuff and what I really like about this conditioner is that it's really really great at detangling your hair not only does it soften it but it makes it so easy to comb through and it works super fast I have other hair masks that I will use if I've got you know, like the 10 minutes in the shower, I've got like the Olaplex treatments, all that kind of stuff. But just for every day or especially quick on the go, I really like this. This product is also pretty affordable compared to a lot of the other hair products that are at Sephora. And I noticed it was listed in the, like the affordable category or something like that. So definitely check out this brand if you haven't already. I've tried some samples of their other stuff and everything is really good, but the hair mask is definitely my favorite. Now a new hair product that I got is this one. This is from that JVN brand. I think it's like the Jonathan, the Jonathan Van Ness brand. And if I'm not mistaken and this is called complete air dry cream and so this is a leave-in cream that you use when you want to air dry your hair and I don't know I was curious about this because this looked like the kind of thing that would sort of help to encourage your waves or if you have curls and you need to kind of like nourish your curls or you use a diffuser that's kind of what this product is for I did use it last night I don't know guys I think because my hair is now so color treated I don't really have a lot of that wavy texture that I used to have when I was younger unfortunately so I think I need to try this out a little more my hair wasn't completely dry by the time I woke up I could kind of see it doing its work it's very moisturizing and it also didn't leave my hair greasy which is really nice it seems to be just like a really nice leave-in cream so I don't know I think I need to try this out a little bit more and maybe mix it with something and like do a little do a little bit of like a scrunch like a little scruncheroo or something along those lines but if you do have more textured hair than me more a little bit more curl or wave I think this is going to be really good but I, I just feel like I need to try it out a little bit more before I have like a real opinion about it let's get into the makeup okay what do I want to talk about first so I did pick up another RMS blush 
I only have the shade Maiden's Blush, which is actually the one that I'm wearing on my cheeks today because I did this very smoky look, but I wanted to pick up something a little bit more colorful. I actually wanted to pick up one that didn't look like any of the, <laughs> any of the Gucci blushes since a lot of those shades are very similar. And I picked up the shade Sangria. Let me show you what this looks like. It looks like I barely touched it. I've only used this maybe like two times, full disclosure, because I've been testing out so many products. But let me just swatch this for you guys. You see it on my finger right there first. Ooh, look how pretty. This is just such a nice flush on the cheeks if you are doing especially a very minimal look. This is a really nice blush to put on and then you could pop a little bit in like the crease, maybe a little sparkle sparkle on the lid or just bare lids and a little mascara. It's such a fresh and nice look and I think that I think that this shade is good for all year round. I would look at this and instantly think this is more of like a spring summer shade, but it actually looks really pretty for fall winter as well. And if you're not familiar with these blushes, if you haven't heard of them, they're just like really nice glowy formula blushes. They're a little bit glowier than the Gucci blushes, but they're also a little bit more affordable. I think that the packaging, you know, it's minimal, but it's nice. In general, I like them. I was thinking about getting more shades, but I kind of, I, I pumped the brakes a little bit because I already got like all the Pat McGrath blushes. I got all the Gucci blushes. I've been getting all those Suku blushes and I'm kind of like blushed out. So I pumped the brakes there and I got this shade Sangria. Another product that I'm really excited about are these Urban Decay lip stains. These are called the Vice Liquid Lip Color. And, and this color that I got is called Law of Attraction. It's a brown. And I thought we would put this on my lips today so I can show you guys this. These are good these are good okay so first you shake them up shake them up like this and you get a nice little precise doe foot applicator this is just like a nice brown shade you do have to kind of work with it to get an even layer at first but once you get it on it's definitely on there. Okay, so this is what Law of Attraction looks like. It's just a really beautiful fall brown. And so let me tell you a little bit about the formula and how it differs from other brands because I see this kind of lip lacquer, lip stain kind of trend being really popular right now. These don't stain that much. They're not gonna be like the Fenty lip stains. Those actually stain your lips. But the difference between the two is that the Fenty, they're very high shine. They look like lip gloss, like very shiny lip glossy type of product, but the gloss wears away. I don't wanna say quickly, but way more quickly than these ones from Urban Decay. And then you have a much stronger stain. With these, it's more of a long lasting lip lacquer. Like they don't, I don't find that this color, I only have the one color, but I don't find that it stains that much. But once you get it on, they've done a really good job of like, not making it incredibly sticky and also making it so that it doesn't dry down. You kind of get that sort of moisturized look, but it stays really well. It's very long lasting. So if you're someone that you don't like really dry liquid lipsticks or really dry matte lipsticks, you want something that's comfortable to wear, but that's also long lasting and gives a little bit of shine. I think that these are really good. Honestly, I probably would have gotten more, but the colors, like there's not that much differentiation between a lot of the colors. And some of the colors are way too light for my lip tone. I have a very pinky lip tone. And if I put those light colors on, it just clashes and it looks weird. So I would love to see them come out with some more colors of these. They're really, really pretty. And honestly, I'm really happy with this beautiful, like toasty fall brown. So you guys need to check these out. I do recommend, you know, maybe trying one out in the sale or I bet Urban Decay is gonna have a sale too on their site come Black Friday. So you can see it's kind of dried down. See? So it kind of just sets and then you can, oh, I got a little, shoot, I got a little bit on my tooth. So it just kind of like sets down. And then from then on, it doesn't feel super sticky, but the moisturization is there and the formula is flexible enough that it's not going to like chip off, dry off, rub off. I couldn't help myself. I purchased another YSL Rouge Volupte Shine and this is in the shade 129 Carmine Retro. I'll put all the shades down in the description, by the way, of course. 
And let me swatch this for you, friends. It's just a really beautiful scarlet, you know, perfect for the holidays, great for fall and winter. I don't know, I saw this shade and it, I, th I think when you put it on the lips, especially my tone of lips, which is a little darker, it comes across so gorgeous and, and juicy, a little bit deeper. Oh, you have like a darker skin tone. I think this is gonna like melt into the lips so beautifully. And of course you get that awesome packaging. When I was doing my glowy skin roundup video, maybe it was maybe like about two months ago at this point, I realized my Charlotte Tilbury Flawless Filter was probably expired at that point so I decided to pick up the mini because in all reality this is a lot of product for me to finish up I want to have this in my collection not only because I like this product but also because it's a classic and because I do comparisons with this product all the time so I also picked this one up and I picked it up in the shade too fair which i'm pretty sure is the shade that i have before so i did chuck the other one that i had and then i picked up this little mini i bought three mascaras but i did recently use up a bunch so i'm kind of replenishing some that are my favorites after using up a few picked up the ones i like the best and then i picked up a new one that i'm wearing on my lashes today so the two that i replenished are obviously the Cali Ray Tubing Mascara. This is so, so good. This is one of my favorite mascaras. Let me show you guys actually what the wand looks like. I have a full review of this mascara, by the way, if you guys are interested and I compare it with some other tubing formulas, but the wand is exactly what I like. Very tapered and slender. The formula is very long lasting. It adds so much length to my lashes. It's called the Cub Hell or High Water Mascara for a reason. In general, I really like Cali Ray. Not every single product is like a complete slam dunk, but I would say most of them I love. My favorite products are this one, number one, and then number two would be the Skin Tint. My other favorite mascara, which is similar to the Cali Ray, but a little bit more dramatic and volumizing, is this one from Hourglass. It's Hourglass Unlocked Instant Extensions Mascara. This is a really good one. Both the Cali Ray and this one are kind of my holy grails. You guys asked me pretty often like what's on your lashes what mascara do you use because I love big long full lashes and I don't wear fake lashes all that much because I just can't be bothered with it I do that more so like on the weekends when I go out not like you know at eight o'clock in the morning or whenever when I'm filming so yeah I really like those two and then the new one that I got is this one I was waiting to get this one in the sale this is the tower 28 mascara this is also amazing let me show you guys the wand i wonder if this has gone viral or whatever i feel like a lot of people are talking about it all of a sudden this wand the biggest difference between this and the cali ray is that this one is curved it also has little ridges that do a really great job of like pulling the mascara through your lashes and then let's see if i can get it to do it if you push the if you push the wand can you see how it like splits out? It's kind of hard to it's kind of hard to do to be honest. I'm getting mascara like all over me. If you press like directly down on the brush, you can kind of see how it splits. Hopefully you guys can see that. I don't know what that does. I'll be honest with you. I think it's a gimmick. Like you don't really notice the brush opening up as you use it like I'm looking at it right now and if anything maybe it just kind of is a almost like a vessel or a trough for having like extra pigment in there so you don't have to dunk in as much I guess but I honestly like when I'm using the mascara I don't notice a difference at all having that in there I think it's a little bit gimmicky I think it's the kind of thing where like oh go viral we've never seen anything like this before but that being said this is an absolutely bomb mascara I think it performs very, very similar to the Cali Ray in terms of longevity and effect. I think if you're choosing between the two, you know, I think if you like a smaller brush, if you like something that's also a straight brush, go for the Cali Ray. If you want to encourage a little bit more curl in your lashes, I would probably go for the Tower 28 because it has that curve. Although if you have shorter lashes, I honestly would probably go for the Cali Ray because the bristles on this are a little bit longer and they might be a little bit pokier if you have very short lashes. So those are my recommendations. But right now, these are my three favorite mascaras ever. They're very long lasting. They're very lengthening. And I would say they're pretty volumizing as well with the hourglass being the most volumizing. During these sales, a lot of times I'll go to products that I already love that I kind of collect the shades and I'll pick up like a shade or two. So I did also pick up 
three lip liners. One of them is one that I had and I cherished and I don't know where it went. I lost it maybe like a year ago. It's gotta be in like some handbag pocket or like coat pocket but I just haven't found it yet. That is the shade Buff from Pat McGrath and this is like the Charlotte Tilbury pillow talk of Pat McGrath. Let me show you what this looks like. It's just a pinky nude. It's just a pinky nude, I know, but it's literally the best lip liner. I love Pat McGrath and Charlotte Tilbury lip liners. Those are my favorite. So the other two I got are in fact from Charlotte Tilbury. The next one that I got is the Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk 2 Medium. So I'll show you, it's that one right there. So Buff is very similar to the regular Pillow Talk. And then this is the Pillow Talk Medium. It has a nice like dusty rose color, has like a hint of brown. So I really like that. And then the last one that I got also from Charlotte Tilbury, this is called Hollywood Honey. And actually this would look really good with the lip that I have right now. I was preparing for this video and I was getting all the little products into uh, my little box right here. And I realized friends, I already have Hollywood Honey. I already have it, so now I have two. So now I gotta wear my autumnal browns. Actually, let's put a little bit on. A little bit on right there. Ooh, do we wanna fill in the cupids bow? Some of you are watching this and you're like, no. My best friend says she doesn't like it, but that's okay. Rebecca, if you're watching, I'm so sorry. Sometimes I just wanna look like a Bratz doll. Okay, so this is the lip. Don't judge me if it's a little bit uneven. I'm literally doing it in the selfie camera. <laughs> so those are the three lip liners that I picked up. I also picked up two new eyeliners and these are from Urban Decay. I was in the store yesterday picking up the Mario palette. I wasn't planning on picking up the Mario palette. I was planning on picking up that House Labs foundation. I'm actually, I think I'm gonna order it because I went into the store and I was able to find a shade match, but they were sold out of all of the light shades. All the ones like in my spectrum, they were sold out. So that's the one thing I think I am going to order now after I'm doing this haul. But while I was there, I turned around and I saw the Urban Decay 24 seven eyeliner pencils. And I was like, hello there, old friend. I'm gonna do some swatches. So the first one that I got is the one that I'm wearing on my eyes today. This is called Demolition. And I know this is like the most boring shade ever, but these eyeliners are so good. I did wanna get this very boring chocolate brown. And I got this shade, which I'm pretty sure I had this in high school. This shade is called Stash, and this is a beautiful shimmering khaki green. It's a dark green with gold sparkle, and I thought it would be fun to compare this one up against that new Victoria Beckham one, the new like glittery holiday ones. I think that the shade is pretty similar, but the formula is obviously going to be different. So maybe I'll post that comparison on my Instagram. I think if you don't like the Victoria Beckham formula or you want something that's a little bit less glittery, maybe check out this one from Urban Decay. I feel like I've known about this shade for a long time. Once again, I'm pretty sure I had this in high school. I think it's kind of a classic. The last things that I got in the sale before we get into the Mario palette are a couple of Sephora collection brushes and these are from the pro line you guys would have heard in my Sephora recommendations video I really like these especially the ones for concealers and cream products because I wash these brushes so often I feel like having something synthetic that is very hard wearing that isn't like a super expensive food a type of brush I like to just have a couple of these in my kit and it's it's easy for me to use them wash them keep them clean you guys get the picture. So I did in fact get some extras of my two favorite brushes. So I've got the Sephora Pro foundation brush and this is the number 47. And I actually use this for concealer. You can use it for foundation if you have like a um, like a potted foundation, for example, the Chantecaille Future Skin Foundation. I like to use this. I kind of dip it in and just like paint it on like a fancy spa mask. You can use these for masks too, by the way. This is like one of those little paw print shaped brushes. And I use this for my concealer, just kind of all over, all over my face, but mostly under the eye. It's kind of just like that perfect shape. And then I also picked up another one of the concealer brushes. This is the Pro Concealer number 70. One And this is just the smaller version of the number 47, as you can see. And so if you like more precise application, that's what this is gonna be good for. See how it just fits perfectly in the little tear duct area around the nose. And then I saw this one too. This is the, what is this called? The number 45. And I think this is, yes, also the Pro Concealer. And this is a perfect 
little flat brush that I am gonna use all the time for just detail work. I also like to use these little brushes for helping to shape my eyeshadow wing. So if I wanna clean up just around here to sort of get that like upright, like foxy eye snatched look, or if I have some eyeliner, I'll use this to kind of get a sharper line. So I was very excited to see this. I think you could use it for spot treatment and that kind of stuff. It kind of reminds me of the one that's in the BK Beauty Angie Hot and Flashy set, that little flat one. So I was very intrigued. I always use these kind of brushes, so I picked up one of these as well. Okay, friends, now we're going to talk about the new Mario palette because I need to give you guys my first impressions before the sale ends. Please give me your feedback and let me know if you want to see a full review with comparisons. There's already been so many reviews out and I just got this palette. So I want to know if it's going to be worth the like multi-hour investment to do an in-depth review. But at the very least, I'm going to share my first impressions. Let's start off with the packaging. I actually really like the packaging. I was shocked because I thought it was going to be plasticky like the like the bronzer products that I reviewed for you all during the summer, but it's not. It's actually a super weighty metal. Don't forget this palette, I think it's $68 if I'm not mistaken. It's very expensive and a lot of you guys have commented on how expensive it is. So I just want to mention I actually think the packaging is fantastic. Now let's open this baby up and I'm going to show you what the shades look like. The first thing that I noticed is that you really don't get that many deep colors in here. This color is fairly deep. Let me actually do some swatches for you. It's a nice deep chocolate brown, but I very much would have appreciated a black in this palette. Excuse me. I think that a black really would have rounded this palette out. There are so many brown mattes in here. I just don't know, like, was it really necessary to give us a bone shade and this light one? I don't know, like, these two shades are very similar. I realize they're different undertones, but I would have loved to have subbed out one of the medium tone shades for a black because I think it would have made it just a little bit more accessible. Now, talking about the formula, I definitely have a lot of thoughts. I've only used this once. By the way, this is what it looks like. This is what it looks like. There's tons of sparkle and shine. I used, I think, four or five of the shades. And my thoughts on the formula are, starting with the mattes, the mattes are extremely powdery, very, very powdery. And I'm not saying that they're powdery in a bad way, but I want to call it out because it's one of those types of formulas where you get so much kick up in the pan, it kind of makes a mess. You know how the Anastasia formula is? It's a little bit like that, except even more powdery, even more finely milled. I don't know, again, this is first impressions. I kind of think the Anastasia formula is a little bit easier to blend. I don't think that these are better than Viseart mattes. I don't think that they're better than like the Wayne Goss mattes. They're very powdery and they're very blendy. Like it almost kind of was a little bit hard to control the color because it was so finely milled. I hope that this is making sense. When I just, you guys can kind of see, see how I picked up so much pigment? Look, it just got all over the camera. It just got all over my phone. That's how much powder just came off. I quite literally just had to wipe off my phone because so much pigment and powder came off of my fingers. So these are maybe a little too blendy and it can be a bit difficult to build up the depth exactly where I want. I'm being very critical here because he's trying to launch something that is very firmly like in that luxury category, I think, and it's a pretty it's a pretty expensive palette. Now, let's talk about the shimmers. Some of the shimmers have a very sheer base. I'm going to show you guys what I mean. I'm swatching this shade right here. Do you see that? It's very beautiful and glimmery. This is actually the topper shade that I have on my eyes right now. And I'll swatch it here for you as well. See how there isn't really much of a base to that? It's beautifully glimmery, but there isn't really that much of a base. And like most of the shades in here are like that. Let me see if I can show you. This one right here, that one has more of a base. This is the one that I have applied to my lid first. So you get more of a metallic, and then here you get more of a topper. There's also this lighter one, which is what I have in my inner corner. And that also is kind of a topper. They also have this one, which is like the chocolate one. And that one has much more of a base. So first off, 
I really wish that there was a little bit more of a balance here because the only metallic shades that really have a base are these two shades. So take a look at those and you know think about if that's enough for you. And then these shades right here that don't have that much of a base, I do think that they are stunning. I think that they glimmer and gleam. They're so beautiful. Like, look at this on the eyes. I think I'm gonna leave the house and I'm gonna get some compliments this evening. I feel like this is a really beautiful look. But the call-outs that I wanna make is first off, it is glitter. It's a very refined glitter. You know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of the shimmer shades that you find in a Wayne Goss palette. Very, very similar. They also remind me of those hourglass toppers, the scattered light. I think it's called the hourglass scattered light. Also reminds me of those. So if you guys have those formulas already in your collection, I don't really think that you're getting anything really special out of this. It's a beautiful color story. I like that I have everything in one. You know, with the Wayne Goss palettes, I have said in the past, I wish there were more shimmer shades. I wish there was a little bit more selection from the metallics or the shimmers. And I am getting that here. But I don't think that the matte formulas are better than in some of those other palettes that I have. The other thing about the shimmer shades is that you do get quite a bit of fallout. I have been wearing this, it's like 4.30 right now in the afternoon, and I've been wearing this since about 10 o'clock in the morning, 9.30 in the morning. And I do have, I don't know if you guys can see it in the camera in this lighting, but I do have quite a bit of fallout under my eyes. So similar to that Patrick Ta palette that came out earlier this year, I did do a review of that for you guys, and my caveat to you was that it's pretty glittery. You need to like glitter to like that palette and to like this palette. I think that this glitter, it is a little bit more ethereal. It is a little bit more finely milled in my opinion. And of course the tones are a little bit different, but honestly, I think that if you already have that first Patrick Ta palette, that's like the same, almost the same exact color story. If you have Wayne Goss palettes, if you have Vizzy Art palettes, if you have the Hourglass Scattered Light toppers, I really just don't think that you need this. I think that this is good. I'm going to I'm going to New York City this weekend. I think I'm going to bring this palette with me and try it out a little bit more, try out some of the shades because it is a nice like neutral look. And then I'll probably decide whether or not I'm going to return it because I just don't think that this is like the best palette in the world. I think it's a good palette. I also heard some people saying that this was limited edition, which I don't really know. I don't see anywhere that it says it's limited edition, not on the product page on Mario's website not on the product page on Sephora. I don't really know why he would make this limited edition because to me, this is like a new beautiful luxury standard that will be a part of his collection. And I do think a lot of people are going to like this. So with that friends, my first impressions of this palette are that it's really beautiful. I really like the look that I got from it. Is it gonna be my favorite neutral palette? I don't know, probably not. I don't think it will because I do like more dense high shine metallics like this, kind of like that Charlotte Tilbury formula or like a Pat McGrath or Natasha Denona. I like those types of foiled shadows. And then I like the option of adding on a topper. I don't like a full palette full of toppers and like very, very, very basic matte shades with no black and nothing to kind of like deepen up the look. So if you're debating getting this, don't get it because you don't need it and it's not like the best thing ever. So yeah, guys, those are my first thoughts upon trying this. Comment down below if you have picked this up. I know a lot of you have told me that your palette is arriving like today, that you're gonna be trying it this weekend. So I would love to hear your thoughts. Also, let me know what you thought of my haul. Let me know what you thought of the things that I purchased. I would love to hear what you guys got in the sale. Did you shop anything? Were you good this year and you didn't buy anything? Comment down below and let me know. If you like this video, please don't forget to give me a big thumbs up. It really helps me out. And if you are still watching this video and you haven't subscribed to my channel, what are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe button to join our fam. And if you're not sure, you can head on over to my channel page and check out some of the other products and reviews that I have on there. I hope that you guys are having a fantastic day and I will see you in my next one. Goodbye.